All right, so today I want to do a little bit of self-care. I have never painted my own nails myself alone. And I have this nail polish that is, I'm not gonna lie, probably 10 years old or longer. Doesn't have a date on it, very old. And never have used it before. My mom really gets sick by the smell, so I've been quarantined outside and not allowed to come in. It's very smoky out today. I don't know, the air quality says it's 47, which is still good. So I don't know if one of our neighbors had a fire last night or something, or if we have a local fire somewhere, but it's really smoky, kind of giving me a headache. But I really want to do this, and so I am going to. <laughs> so like I said, I've never done it alone. Whenever I would like go over to friends' houses, you know, in high school or whatever, I would do whatever they had because it was fun and it was special. But I have never done it myself, and... I don't have a base coat and I don't have a top coat. I only have this. So let's see. I'm pretty nervous, I'm not gonna lie. You know what, I'm gonna go get a, there's freaking bugs out here today. I'm gonna go get a paper towel to like put my hand on as I'm doing it. All right, that seems professional. All right, we're gonna start with the non-dominant hand, painting with the dominant hand. So let's just open it first of all and see what we're working with. It could not be good anymore. Yep, that smells like nail polish. Okay, this seems doable. All right, I'm gonna try it and maybe time lapse. And we'll see how this goes. Wish me luck. <laughs> All right, so one hand is done. I became less and less careful with each finger. And I think you wait until it dries and then you get rid of the stuff on the side. But I could be mistaken. I don't really know how this works. So I think I'm gonna let it dry and then like get rid of the imperfections, but I don't really know. All right, so this, God, my hair is just a mess today and it's also super humid. This layer has dried. So I think I'm gonna do another layer and We'll see, <laughs> we will see. All right, let's try it. I don't know, I might have put, maybe it shouldn't have had another layer. Maybe it shouldn't have had two. I don't know, some of them seem kind of clumpy. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, we'll see. I'm gonna let it dry and then try to do the other hand. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> All right, I'm exhausted. This is hand two. Yeah, a lot harder doing it with my non-dominant hand. I'm really tired. <laughs> so I think that's it for the rest of the day for me. Didn't expect this to be so exhausting, but I'm so wiped out. So that is yeah, that's coat one, but that might be the last coat for this one. <laughs> Alright, let's let it dry. Alright, hair is still wild, but they are done. And I think that they look pretty good. I don't have a top coat like I said, so I think that they're going to get pretty messed up very quickly. But I'm really excited that I did this for myself. I've always been just like obsessed with long nails. When I was young, oh, I'm having a flash. When I was young, I would put literally paper clips on the end of my nails and go around and sometimes it would like cut off the circulation, so it's pretty dangerous, <laughs> my mom got to stop me pretty quick. And then I would also like, you know, take like, like a pencil or like a pen and like go on my nails and try to like have, you know, nail polish even though I didn't have nail polish. So I've always been obsessed with this even from a young age. So this is like a really big moment for me to have done this for myself. And I'm excited, even if it lasts like only a couple days. This was this was really fun for me. I might try to, like I said, this nail polish was like probably 10 years old. I might try to buy some. And this isn't really my like color. I love like blues, purples, maybe like a silver. So I might buy some um, that I really love. So, yeah. I don't know if you can see that well. Dun, dun, dun. See, not bad. I think I did a pretty good job. I'm a perfectionist, so yeah. Yay! Did it. So happy with the, the outcome. All right, 
so I think my last clip was about my nails. They are definitely chipping now. I actually did purchase some hollow taco from Simply Nailogical, like a kind of like a silver white. So I'm really excited for that to come and then I'll take this off and then I'll put the silver on. There's a plain one second. <laughs> All right, so a little health update. I'm so tired. I have had my fourth ovarian cyst in four months burst last week and this one has lasted a lot longer and that is pretty concerning for me. So in the past my ovarian cyst pain has lasted three to five days max and after those three to five days it goes away completely. Usually it's closer to five days. This time it's been eight days and my pain level is still at a 6.5 out of 10. 10 being like really bad so that's concerning I don't know why it's different I'm still having all the other symptoms but it literally feels like someone has uppercutted me in my stomach a bunch and just beat me up in my abdominal region and it's just always exactly the same symptoms as my past ovarian cysts and it's just really frustrating and scary this time I was on a really intense ibuprofen to try keeping the pain levels down and it did keep the pain levels down on Saturday I stopped taking it and went to a lower dose because I was like it should be going away by now why am I still in so much pain if I don't take this and so then today I called my doctor and left a message for the nurse because I'm concerned. You can have, you know, ovarian torsions where the cyst is on top and it like flips it. You can have a lot of internal bleeding from a burst ovarian cyst. I mean, there's a lot of complications you can have. And I still don't have an appointment with a GYN. I mean, I have an appointment, but that's not until the end of October. I still have two more cycles of more burst variances before then. And I, I've just been doing so much research and it's just so frustrating because this is so rare. I don't know what is causing this, but I just, I just want relief, you know? I just want to not have this happen anymore. But, I mean, I, I, I don't have much control over it. Like, I'm doing everything I can. We, you know, I take birth control for my acne and we changed my birth control this last cycle to try seeing if that would stop it. Obviously it didn't. So it's just so confusing and frustrating. So anyway, that's one health update. The other health update is I saw the herbalist last week and he is giving me a new diagnosis and a new treatment plan because I, I wasn't reacting well to the one before. So my last diagnosis was dysbiosis and my new diagnosis is atrophic gastritis so i don't know much about those things he is diagnosing me based on symptoms so i don't know how accurate those diagnoses are but the new treatment plan is taking me off of the supplements that had neem in them which i'm not sure if i'm like allergic to neem but i just was not reacting well to it and it was changing my symptoms to some other bad symptoms it wasn't necessarily making it better so that's been frustrating he said that he's only seen atrophic gastritis in the way that mine is manifesting like two to three times in the past five years so apparently it's super rare <laughs> i'm always a zebra in med school they teach people in the medical field when you hear hooves pounding the ground think of horses not zebras I happen to be a zebra every time. I'm always the like 0.5%, the point, you know, whatever. It's I, I'm always the small percentage of like, oh, that usually never happens. Usually happens to me. My body is just so weird. <laughs> so yeah, that is kind of the update on that. I also am changing my diet. I talked recently about how stressful the really restrictive no carb, no sugar diet was because I have a past of eating disorders of like binging and craving and restricting and all of that and a really restrictive diet obviously triggers that again eating disorders really never go away or haven't for me and as far as my understanding goes you always kind of live with those thoughts you just try to not give into those thoughts so going on a really really restrictive diet obviously triggers those thoughts and is really difficult because when you restrict all i can think about is is food is carbs i love pasta i miss pasta i miss my bagels i used to have a bagel a gluten-free bagel every morning with breakfast for breakfast because that's what would sit well on my stomach 
and these days I'm having to have like yogurt for breakfast and that is not sitting well so I really really miss carbs so he said okay we'll try to start reintroducing some carbs some fruit if you react to it then obviously don't eat it I'm kind of reacting to everything right now so I'm trying to assess like what makes me really really bad or what is just like a <laughs> a normal level of not feeling good and I'm only allowed to have starches which are most carbs four times a week so that's obviously really difficult but I'm really glad that I'm able to have some and try introducing some again because literally I never feel satiated when you're not eating carbs and I can't have a lot of meat because my body reacts to it and I can't have a lot of nuts I mean both of those things are really really difficult to digest when you can't have those things and you're only really eating veggies and fruit that stuff really does not sit with you it doesn't matter how much you eat I just I just don't feel satiated and maybe it does for other people and that's great for them for me personally it's not been going well <laughs> So I'm really grateful to be able to kind of introduce those foods back in, but yeah, it's just been difficult and I I haven't been feeling well because of the burst ovarian cyst, so it's hard to differentiate because we switched to this new treatment plan during the time I've had my burst ovarian cyst, so it's hard to differentiate between, okay, am I just not feeling good because of the burst ovarian cyst still, or am I still you know, am I not reacting to the new treatment plan? It's just, it's it's a frustrating, like too much is happening right now and it's a frustrating mix of things to try figuring out what's going on. So yeah, that is the health update. I hope you are doing well. I am still on my dopamine detox. I'm still not on social media except for posting about this vlog and I've been feeling great about that part. <laughs> not feeling great any other time, but about my my stress levels related to social media have definitely gone down and you know just being off my phone as much as possible that has felt amazing. So yeah I'm just trying to plug away but <sighs> these darn ovarian cysts are really killing me right now. The pain is just too much. <laughs> So yeah, that is the health update and crazy story time next week. So definitely stay tuned for that because I saw some really traumatic stuff and I also talk about one of my biggest phobias that I then saw. So yeah, stay tuned for that. All right, hope you're having a fabulous day. Bye. Bye.